Hi, this is Gary from LawnAeration.com. Today I've got a demo unit um, that was generously supplied by my dealership out at Buckeye Power Sales. Uh, they're great guys to work with if you're in uh, the Central Ohio area. Uh, we're going to demo the aerator today. This is an Xmark 24-inch stand-on riding aerator. Um, you can probably see some of my own my other videos that are the. 30-inch uh, stand-on aerators, the Ryan aerators, some of the other things. Uh, today we're going to look at the general operation of the machine, some of the features it has on this unit, uh, and maybe some comparisons and contrast to other units. So first thing we're going to look at is basically just the size of it. Uh, come around the front, you can see the aeration swath is uh, 24 inches wide. Um, and and that's actually, you know, how wide the tines are. Uh, around the back of the machine, from outside tire to outside tire, it's 35 and a half inches. So what this does is that 35 inches allows you to get inside fences. Uh, if you look around, you'll notice um, I came in that fence gate right there uh, because we have to aerate, you know, this pool area. <laughs> Normally when we come to this complex, we've had to use a walk behind to do inside this pool area. Um, it usually takes us about 30 to 45 minutes to aerate this. Uh, you know, this aerator is designed primarily for someone that wants a catch-all unit that doesn't want to have to use a walk behind all the time and maybe has a lot of fences to do. So from the perspective that you're going to buy an aerator that gets inside fence gates, this might be a good choice for you. Um, you know, if you have a lot of large properties, you might want to look at some of the larger uh, options. Um, you know, we've ran it, so you can uh, look at some of my other videos. You'll be able to see the pros and cons of what I think this unit's capable of. If you decide that you just want one aeration machine and you want the capability to ride, do some larger areas uh, and a lot of smaller fenced-in areas, this could be a good unit. Because if you do it the way that we've done it in the past, we have a lot of different type machines, but we'd have a large unit for open areas, we'd have a walk behind unit for small areas. By the time you're done, you'll buy a large unit that's maybe, I don't know, uh, between ten and twelve thousand dollars, and then you'd have to buy a smaller walk behind unit that might be somewhere between twenty five hundred and say four thousand dollars for the walk behind unit. Altogether, you might have fourteen or fifteen thousand dollars where you can buy this unit. Uh, it'll do you know, large residential properties, it'll do inside defenses, and for the vast majority of the time, you will not have to have both units if you bought something like this. Um, now looking at the features, it's set up very similar to some of the other riding machines that we've looked at, um, especially the X marks. If you look at the control panel, you'll see what you're probably pretty familiar with. Um, you have a, um, this controls your hydraulic down pressure for the tines. Uh, this is something that's new, and we'll explain this in a minute. Um, here's your throttle, your choke, your key, and your parking brake, and then of course your steering controls. Um, I will say this unit is a little bit more difficult to operate than some of the other units. Uh, this is your tine control, so whenever you push down this button, the tines actually go in the ground. Whenever you release the button, the tines come up out of the ground. Uh, the tines are underneath the machine, um, in between the tires. This unit is a little bit um, unique in the sense that um, this digital control panel up here uh, is a new feature. Um, in my opinion, uh, it's a little redundant, but I'll, I'll show you what it's for. Uh, in order to operate this machine, uh, what you would do to start with is you have to set the rider control settings. Normally on an aerator, you don't do that too much. But on this one, you have to set the rider control settings depending on how large the rider is or how much weight um, that the rider has. Uh, so let me show you how that's done. We need to start up the machine. And if you look at this control panel, um, this does several things. But one thing it does is you'll see a little light right up here um, that tells you if the foot pedal switch, which is this one right down here, uh, whether or not it's locked. Uh, so you would unlock that. Second thing it does is it goes up and down. You can see numbers from 0 to 5. Um, and basically these are your depth control settings. You know, um, how much pressure your tines have in the ground. 
Uh, but for the initial setup, what you want to do is set this gauge to number three. Then we need to start the machine up. Adjust the knob for your rider size and control, then you can use this to set your time depth. Normally, you want to keep it in the middle. If it's a hard surface that day, you may turn it up to like five. If it's really soft, you may turn it down to one. Uh, looks like those go by one or one half uh, degree increments on the control button. Uh, after you've done that, you're ready to air it. So next thing you want to do is make sure your parking brake is off. a two, two and a half inch plug. Uh, it does a pretty good job aerating. One thing I want to mention as you aerate with the unit is uh, the back tires are very narrow. Sorry, that makes it a little quieter. The back tires are narrow. So as you aerate, it's important that you set up the rider control settings properly so your traction is shared between the tines and the tires. Um, mostly on this unit, the tires do not provide much traction. So on a wet day like today where it's soft out, 
the tines do almost all your driving and all the all the traction. One thing I did notice on when using this machine is that when you're on an off camber slope, like right over here on the pool side, you can see there's a hill. If you're trying to navigate that hill sideways, you have to keep the tines in the ground. If you do not keep the tines in the ground, the unit wants to slide down the hill on you. So you have to be very careful. Um, this unit rides a little bit rough because generally you're on your riding position. Uh, you're standing on the back and you're riding on the time. So as you go over things like the tree roots right around this tree that you can't see above ground, but they are there, it wants to let you bounce a lot. Um, so you do have to keep pretty attentive when you're riding the machine. Uh, let's look at a couple of the features it has. Um, in general, it's set up really similar to some of the other machines. So, you know, you've got a chain here that drives the wheels and you got a chain back there that drives the tines inside the tine carriage. Um, the motor on this unit is set down low. Uh, it uses a Kohler motor and it, it's got a very low center of gravity so it does feel pretty stable however the traction on it is a little bit iffy. Um, you know it has a receiver hitch here in case you want to put an additional spreader or something on it. Uh, both of the hydrostatic transmissions are under these two plates that you can remove with wing nuts. So, you know, your two transmissions are here. Whereas on the larger units, the transmissions are underneath, uh, under here, and the belts are all under, makes it tough to service. So in this situation, serviceability for the belt's a lot easier. Um, it operates very similar. It has a piston ram, uh, which is hydraulic controlled. And this actually is what pushes your tines down in the ground. So in the back, you'll see that here's the tine, here's the chain that drives the tines, um, and there's some crease, greasable bearings right here, and then the two center ones that spin freely. Uh, so this allows for better turning, uh, tighter turning radius. Uh, although you cannot do a zero turn with these, you can turn pretty tight. Uh, as you've seen around the pool, I've made some pretty good um, turns. This machine, like the other X Marks, um, still operates hydrostatic transmission um, that drives the chains, the chains drive the tires, the chains drive the tines. Uh, that being said, there is maintenance in that uh, situation because you have chains to maintenance, chains to lube. You have grease fittings in the tying carriage to grease. Uh, so you definitely have a fair amount of maintenance that's involved with this, this unit uh, that's very similar to some of the other riding aerators. Uh, hopefully, um, this video has helped you look at some of the features of the unit, uh, the basic operation of it, and it'll help you make a decision when it comes time for you to buy one. Uh, once again, I want to thank uh, BPS for letting me have it for the day. Uh, also, keep subscribing to my videos, you'll see more information, uh, and you can search some of my other videos to see lots of other lawn aeration related videos. Thanks for watching! Seabus! <laughs>